Hi kids, Adam Savage here in my cave with a, uh, a show and tell <clears throat> that is, um, it's one of those spikes in the graph, this show and tell. And by that I mean um, in any set of endeavors that we embark upon, uh, and in this case I'm discussing making for me and specifically prop replication for me, <laughs> In my history of prop replication, there are some props that stand out for me as really important little moments in which I understood something I didn't understand before. Uh, so the first time I took a wooden slat and covered it with aluminum foil tape and turned it into a sword, that was, that was like a really powerful moment. Uh, my $5 sword <clears throat> hangs directly above my head right now and it's inspired by that moment. Uh, but the, the Samaritan, which I've only just wrapped, uh, is maybe the most involved prop replica I have ever embarked upon. But it carries, you know, it, its execution, uh, 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 its execution involves everything that I've learned before that. And this show and tell is one of those pieces that taught me a lot early on. Um, this, ladies and gentlemen, is my Henry Jones Grail Diary from Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. And this is a prop replica, which I lovingly and carefully recreated back in, if I remember correctly, 2002, 2003? Yeah, right around there, 2002, 2003. <laughs> because it was right around the time the Mythbusters started, uh, right around the time of my divorce. I remember this because I was alone in an apartment for long periods of time, which helped engender the creation of this prop. But let's get to this prop. This is the Grail Diary. Now, <clears throat> Indiana Jones uh, fans love this prop. This is a very oft created and recreated prop, and there are a lot of wonderful copies out there. It's sort of shocking for how intense and complicated this prop is, how many different people have tackled it. But I think it speaks to what a pleasurable build it is because I personally found it insanely rewarding. In fact, I didn't just make one, I made 10. I made 10 of these, yeah. Where are the other nine? Um, I do not know. They are out there in the world. I, you, what's funny is, well, I'll get to that at the very end of this, okay. Let us open up this wrapper and talk about it from uh, from the get-go. Uh, the wrapping paper is, well, it looks kind of nifty. It's like a pinstripey brown wrapping paper. Um, turns out that's what all of the UK uses as craft paper. So if you watch Number File, they write all their equations on this kind of paper. So it's not that exotic. Um, I found it at Flax back when I was doing this. The Postage stamps here are absolutely correct uh, to the movie. And the cancellation stamps are too. I actually laser cut these on ILM's laser cutter. I made a positive stamp and loaded it with ink and pounded it down on there. I, I actually think I made uh, 13 of these in order to get the 10 that I, that I really liked. Um, the more I wrap it and unwrap it, the better it looks. The diary itself, um, is about 210 pages sewn into signatures. So I learned uh, the rudiments of book binding in order to put this book together. And book binding is fun. Book binding is fun and satisfying. Uh, so uh, when you are book binding, how do you join all these pages at their ends? You actually, uh, you actually end up, uh, uh, hang on just a second. All right, so in order to talk about how the book is constructed, I want to do a ridiculous, simple little lecture on bookbinding in the way it was originally done. Um, your basic paperback is all the pages are clamped together and then glue is laid down the back and they're held together pretty okay. That's, uh, that's a perfect binding. I mean, I, I know they're like a bunch of different names. <clears throat> and it's been a while since I've been in this space, so forgive me if I forget a couple of terms. Um, but back in the olden days, they did what was called signatures. And that is how all like hardcover books and good books are assembled. And a signature is, it breaks a book down into a discrete set of packet, packets 
um, in this case, the Grail Diary is in um, 12 page signatures. Uh, and a 12 page signature looks like this. It is composed actually of only three sheets of paper. But when you fold them, you get page one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Then what you do is once you've gathered your whole book in signatures, you line them up and you, uh, there are many different ways to do this, but you can use a saw. You actually add a couple little holes and you sew the signatures together. There's this whole way of binding. It's really thrilling and fun. And when you finally get it all together and you open your book, it's like, it's freaking Christmas is what it is. But back to the beginning, <clears throat> how do we have images of the Grail Diary? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, there is a Magic of Myth book about Lucasfilm that covers uh, some of their biggest early films, like Empire Strikes Back and Raiders and a few others. And in the Raiders section, there are reproductions of like, I think over 20 or 30 pages, maybe 20 pages of the Grail Diary, full double page spreads in this, in this book. Uh, and those, many of us who replicated this prop did what I did, which was I scanned those pages uh, blew them up in Photoshop until they were large enough to print well. Then I removed all the artifacts from every single image of weathering, right? So like I would take, I would take one of these pages. Here's one, here's one. And in the scan, there might be like blotchiness all around this. So I carefully went in in Photoshop and removed everything but the black text so that when I printed it, it would just be a blank page and I could add my weathering. This, as you can imagine, took a while. Um, weeks and weeks and weeks of Photoshop work. And, <clears throat> you know, as I said, I was, had been recently separated from my, uh, my then wife and uh, I had lots of time on my hand and I needed to do something with my hands and this was the perfect like way to kind of zone out. And so I did for weeks in uh, in early 2000, uh, early 2000. It's 2002, I'm like, my brain is fried. Sorry, it's early 2002. It doesn't matter. Why am I even worrying about it? Okay, so after I've, the book, which is about 200 pages long, is not 200 uniquely different pages. It's a prop. Uh, and a prop department isn't gonna write a whole book to make a fake book. They're gonna come up with a couple dozen pages and then they're gonna repeat them. And that is exactly how this book works. There's like, I can't remember the exact numbers, but maybe there's like 30 individual pages and they just repeat throughout the book like six times. Um, so after I photoshopped all of the images I found in that Lucasfilm book, I found some others online. There are pictures of hero props here and there. There's screen grabs from the movie, which some of us traced in order to create the artwork that we needed. Uh, hold on just a second, I gotta blow my nose. We're coming on spring in San Francisco and it's been raining and that means that we're getting some pollen blooms and um, the way I know about that is because of this very careful detection instrument for pollen that I possess on my face. Um, <clears throat> so I was talking about photoshopping <laughs> tons and tons and tons of pages. It's a, uh, it's tedious work, especially with old 2002 Photoshop, but it was also super pleasurable. I remember it being an incredible education, uh, in Photoshop. Once I had those, then it was gathering the other images that I could. Then there are actually some pages that no one had seen or that you know we knew existed, but no one had found anything remotely good. So there are some folks who developed a, uh, a, a Henry Jones font. And I'm trying to find an example in here of the Henry Jones font. And so some of these pages, yeah, here we go. Um, the text on the top of these two pages, uh, is a Henry Jones font, it's it's okay. Frankly, some of the best Grail Diaries out there are the ones that are being hand-drawn by people who are 
both insane and deserve all the credit because that is insane and holy hell, what a beautiful thing to do. Um, also, you might notice there's stuff pasted in here. Uh, across the Grail Diary, and this is what makes it such an exciting prop for replicators. There are tons of little inserts. There are There is a silver certificate dollar. There are letters from characters within the Indiana Jones canon. There's the Hindenburg ticket. Letters, uh, each piece of paper stuffed into the, the, the spine of this, this bus ticket, these old quotes, every single one had to be researched and replicated. So in doing this, it's not just that I, you know, went and found a picture of this painting. I found the original painting and then photoshopped it until I had a picture that worked for me, right? Uh, with these bus tickets and things like that, I found originals. Uh, and in many cases, the originals had already been found. I can't remember the degree to which I was doing any new research here. So, you know, it's, it's arguable, but uh, I mean, this is what makes prop replication so much fun is you get to like tackle these questions with, well, I mean, in some cases you get to tackle these questions with a whole group of people. And uh, those threads in an RPF where tons of people are like trying to figure out where, where stuff comes from, it can be really exciting. And it can go on for years. All right, so now uh, in this theoretical construction of the book, I have all of my Photoshop pages. I have all of my inserts. Um, I have all of my Photoshop pages as, uh, as master drawings. And then in order, uh, and then I had my inserts and in order to sort the inserts of which there was like 30 or something, I, I had a, a binder with pockets in it and one insert went into each pocket along with each of its, uh, you know, with all of its compadres. So I made 10 books. I like in general made 15 of every insert so that I'd have extra and those all went into the folder. So when I did the final assembly, I was able to like put the inserts in as I went. But each insert is also a completely different piece of paper. So some of this is newsprint and some of this is copy paper and some of this is linen laid paper and some of this is fool's cap. What is fool's cap? Um, frankly, I'm not exactly sure, um, but it's the kind of paper they used all the time in detective novels in the 40s. Um, there's onion skin, oh, onion skin. This prop got me obsessed with onion skin paper. This is onion skin. Um, this is my um, White Star Line Titanic ticket, which just seemed appropriate to have in here. Um, that's like a go with, but this gossamer paper that's like barely there, this is onion skin, and this is what everyone used to type on. And I think the main reason we all used to type on this is because you could put uh, sheets of carbon paper between sheets of onion skin and you could make carbon copies. That's where the phrase comes from. You make carbon copies of, uh, uh, of what you're typing. And the onion skin allowed, because of its incredible thinness, for reference, your average piece of copy paper is about four thousandths of an inch thick. Yep, uh, your piece of onion skin here is two thousandths. It's half the thickness of normal paper, which means the impression your typewriter key makes on the first paper and then on the carpet and the next paper behind it, it can make many more copies than with normal like 20 pound paper. And you can still get this stuff on eBay and it, no one's really paying attention to it. So you can buy reams of this paper, 500 sheets. It's like half an inch thick. You buy 500 sheets of this paper um, for, you know, 15 bucks. Well, I have probably 15 reams of onion skin uh, from across the 20th century. I've sent letters to friends on them. Uh, I made birthday invitations out of them one year but they're phenomenal for prop replication. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's a beautiful feeling paper and sometimes they have watermarks that you can see when you hold them up to the light, Stadler or Strathmore, yeah. Um, <clears throat> paper props are a really, really fun and often quite low cost entry into high level prop replication. Yeah. Um, definitely paper props were like one of these places I cut my teeth on exactitude and precision. Uh, and 
you know, this is 2002. I didn't have a TV show yet. I'm still just uh, uh, working at ILM um, and I was making a fine living. But, I, you know, this is exactly the kind of project that my budget could totally afford. I'm uh, going out and getting lots of different kinds of paper, making lots of experiments, tons of printer cartridges. But... <clears throat> I'm walking you through the build slowly. I know it doesn't seem like it, but I am walking you through the build. So now I have all my Photoshop pages and I have all my inserts. So the next step is to make a book out of all of those. But this is tricky because I can't just print it out because I'm, I'm making the book as a set of signatures, which if you remember are nested folded sheets of paper. In this case, nested three sheet paper bundles that will eventually 15 or 18 of them or so will be lined up to make this whole book. What this means is that when I ha print this thing out, I have to print it out like this. Page one and 12 are opposite each other on this side and on this side, pages two and 11. You see where this is going. 10 and three, four and nine, eight and five, six and seven. Right. I have to do layouts like this, and then I have to print those double-sided. So I get heavier sheets of copy paper, and I do a, a cut line, blue line layout like I used to do in graphic design, and then I paste each of my sheets, one and 12, two and 11, three and 10, et cetera, right? To do the, the layouts of these signatures. And because there's like 35 pages, I think it's like three separate full signatures that I had to lay out. And then it turns out that you can't just take those masters and feed them into a copy machine. Why, you ask? It is a great question, because I thought that's what I would do. I thought, feed inside one, a feed inside one of 100 sheets, turn the motor, feed, feed inside two. I mean, there's some information management there, but it seemed pretty tackleable until you realize that copy machines do not have perfect alignment from one side to the other. No, no, no. <laughs> Draw a dot that's one inch in from each corner and edge on four sides of a piece of paper and make a copy of it and then turn it over, make another copy of it, they're not gonna line up perfectly. They're gonna get close. But here's the reason close isn't good enough. Pages like this. So in this case, I have a drawing which is complete across these two pages, but this is part of one part of the signature and this is part of another. This isn't a single page. This is two separate pages. Their alignment has to be plus or minus like 16th of an inch. All of this meant that in order to make 12 diaries, I had to find someone local who owned a Xerox machine, go to their house, that's 2002. It's like printers weren't everywhere, uh, and spend an entire day hand feeding each sheet in, in the right orientation, doing every signature, managing all the piles. It was like 10 solid hours of copying just to make sure that everything was lined up on both sides so that when I cut the pages, they would all line up like this. Ah, oh, it sounds grueling. And in that moment where I realized I had to hand feed everything, it was a little grueling, but I remember it with nothing but fondness, truly. Um, so now in this theoretical build, I have all my signatures. It's time to clamp them up. I believe I clamped them up in an old wood clamp. Here. My grandfather was a surgeon uh, and also a maker, and I have a couple of his tools in my collection, and this is one of them. I own uh, two of his original wood clamps, and this clamp, I believe, yeah, this clamp was uh, one of the I used both of these clamps to do this, this book clamping, one on one side and one on the other. Uh, and then I tightened them down like this onto the signatures. And then I did that thing. I made two cuts with the saw here, two cuts with the saw here, two cuts like that. Then I sewed them together, bound them inside the end pages. Ah, and the cover, the cover. Right, so in 2002, I had not done much leather working. 
I had made my first whip in the 90s, yes, but that's different than the kind of weatherworking for doing book covers. It's just different thicknesses, different applications. And I knew I wanted a worn leather, and I knew I wanted it consistent across all the books. And I, I was living in the Mission District at that time, not just a few blocks from here, and I could have gone over to S.H. Frank here in the Mission, one of the great leather suppliers in the world. It's just right here a few blocks from us. Um, but I couldn't afford a half hide. That was like over 100 bucks. There was no way I could afford uh, to purchase a brand new piece of leather for this. So I went uh, around the corner to the community thrift store and I bought a leather jacket. I bought an old 80s leather bomber that was like, you know, that fake worn that all of our jackets were in the 80s. And I got, uh, I got nine books out of it. I think I had to get one more jacket to get that 10th book. Um, I got nine jackets out of it. Sorry, I got nine books out of one jacket. It was a really, really, like, I remember it being very therapeutic. I remember it being a delightful place to put my brain at that moment in time. And there is also something intoxicating as a maker, making, making multiples of a thing and making them all perfect. That, 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 is, that is a particular and unique kind of uh, maker's high for me. Um, that's different than just making one thing. There's an assembly line process, which I also love, but that moment when you are really dialing in the final parts of something and you're wrap, you're, you're like putting the inserts into 10 books and you're weathering them with, with a wash and you know, you're banging on them and giving them each a kind of a, the specific weather. And then you're wrapping them all in paper. Just seeing, I, I didn't document any part of this build back when it was happening which is my big regret. Um, it's probably because that was exactly a transition point between film and digital cameras. I was an avid film photographer on 35 millimeter film, um, but by early 2002, I had stopped doing it for the most part because it's expensive to develop all that film and I kind of lost the bug for a while. It wasn't until, uh, it wasn't until late, just around after this, that I picked up the Canon SureShot 110, I think. Perfect, perfect, perfect little early digital camera. Weirdly exactly the size of a pack of cigarettes, which I don't think was on by accident. At any rate, I don't have any evidence of this, which makes me sad because I'd love nothing more than to go back today and look at pictures of stacks of Indiana Jones Grail Diaries. Um, like I said, somewhere in this book, I included, oh, I didn't say it yet. Somewhere in this book, I included a tell. Um, I included a way to identify the book as mine. And you know what? I went and I forgot what the, t I forgot what the tell was. So if you're wondering if you possess one of my books, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, I've got a tell in there somewhere. Uh, I should go back and figure out where that tell is. I mean, I don't even know where to begin thinking about what I would have done. I feel like I would have written something on a small piece of paper, you know, on a on one of the inserts perhaps. But that's, see the insert, you can't make a tell on an insert. It has to be on the actual thing, right? Um, yeah, it is hard to say, ladies and gentlemen, but uh, like I said, I made 10 of these. I traded them, I sold them back then. Um, every single one had individual watercoloring on the pages that have watercoloring. Um, every single page was weathered with a wash of raw umber, um, which is why I had to use copy paper and not inkjet because the inkjet tends to smear in the presence of water. <laughs> Yeah, that's the story of my Indiana Jones Grail Diary. Thank you guys for joining me for this show and tell. It's a bit more involved than I expected, but yeah, it's a fun one. Thank you guys. Stay safe and I will see you next time. Thank you guys so much for watching that entire video. If you would like to support Tested even further, well, I'm here to tell you that you could become a member. If you follow the links below, you'll see there are several tiers of membership depending on how much you'd like to pay and how much access you would like to me and the Tested team. And membership comes 
as always, with some excellent benefits, including uh, questions that I'll answer in live streams. The questions have been so amazing and exclusive videos and exclusive content. Follow the links below and we will see you next time.